taking this from a position of being all the way in the light and in the truth as the seed of Israel um, and proving that with your blood work. I, okay. You know what I'm saying? Because, listen, man, we in the 21st century, man. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, how is it that um, in this advanced technology uh, age, you bums want to still stand up and try and be the leaders of the people of God um, and with all this knowledge and technology available, you don't want to deal in DNA to prove that you are Hebrew. When it's known that all the Hebrews in the world got E1B1A, from the Limba to the Ebo, so, I mean, I, I mean, any single, every single um, Hebrew uh, tribe you find in Africa, they all got E1B1A. Um, and when you get to West Africa to Ebo land, where they took the slaves from that came to America, they got E1B1A. All right. So if 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 the Ebos and Ebo land saying they Hebrews, they had the Torah, uh, you know what I'm saying? You know, sealed. The, they got an original Torah, man. A Torah. They have an original Torah in Ebo land, man. I mean the Limba. Okay. Can you imagine something like that? They've been saying for centuries. I mean, uh, decades and stuff that they've been. Oh, uh, they the Israelites. And they come out with a tour of talking about, you know what I'm saying? They've been having this and had it had to, to seal it so that nobody could tamper with it. They got E1B1A. You go to West Africa, the Ebos, the Ebo land got E1B1A, Yoruba. Uh, all these people got E1B1A. But here in America, you clown ass niggas want to act like y'all the, the, the prophets of the Most High. Y'all want to act like y'all the apostles of the Most High. You proud clown ass niggas running y'all mouth and you niggas ain't got nothing, you know what I'm saying, but falsehood about yourself. That's why your ass ain't got that DNA yet, man. Okay, I've been preaching and teaching this, this doctrine, all right, for a little while. And, you know, not no long time, man. I, was, I mean, you know, I ain't been preaching a long time, but out of truthfulness and humility, to show and prove who I am and what I'm speaking about, I went and got the DNA done, all right? And I was, you know, you know, certain in myself, if my shit didn't come back E1B1A, I knew I wasn't a fucking Israelite. But I did it, because I got nuts. Where you niggas nuts at, nigga? Where your nuts at, nigga? Put your nuts out there, quit running your fucking mouth, nigga. Show me that E1B1A, nigga, before you say anything else to me, nigga. I don't care who you say you is, what apostle you say you is, what elder you say you is, how many years you been reading and holding on to these scriptures. Nigga, put the E1B1A on the table for any other Israelite here, anything you got to say, nigga. Straight up, put up or shut the fuck up, nigga. In tonight's Fox 32 special report, DNA kits called into question. They are the kind advertised on TV claiming to trace your ancestry. A woman says she used two different popular services to trace her family history and got wildly different results. Fox 32's Tia Ewing reports. This is my mother, mm -hmm. my father. Jennifer Smith says flipping through family albums helps her reconnect with the past. And I just want to learn as much as I can about my history. She recently took that learning one step further and decided to try a DNA testing kit. Ancestry.com, very popular. You know, they're in all of the commercials. Everybody talks about them. Smith received the kit 
followed the directions and mailed it back. Just like the lady on TV says, you have to spit in the tube. It's not ladylike, but that's what you do. Then she waited the four to six weeks. And I was shocked. Smith's breakdown from ancestry showed 97% European and 2% Asian. I'm a black girl. I am not a Jewish white lady. I'm, I'm black. My parents were black. She contacted Ancestry with questions, but says a rep told her the results are accurate. She told me there was no way they could have made an error. Smith decided to try again, but this time she submitted a DNA to 23andMe. And the results were very different, but they were not a surprise to me. The 23andMe findings showed 70% African for Smith after Ancestry's findings showed none. Both kids can't be right. One of them has to be wrong. The, these DNA tests for ethnicity are entertainment value only. William Gilliland is a biology professor at DePaul. He says DNA kits can be great for connecting family members and finding relatives. But the science for ethnicity testing isn't as concrete. There's nothing that confident for ethnicity. There's no diagnostic nucleotide. You can say this person is from Europe, this person's from Africa. So what happened in Smith's case? The simplest explanation is that one of these test results is just wrong and the tubes got mixed up or contaminated or something. We reached out to both Ancestry DNA and 23andMe. Ancestry tells us it's incredibly unusual to find variations of this magnitude. The company says it's best guess that the tubes were mixed up before they were sent to their labs. 23andMe says because companies use different algorithms to make ancestry assignments, you can find differences when comparing tests from different companies. It's exciting to make discoveries like this, but if they're not true, it's heartbreaking. Tia Ewing, Fox 32 News. So I recently took one of those at-home DNA ancestry tests. All I had to do was fill up a vial with a disgusting amount of spit and mail it off for analysis. We're gonna be here for a very long time. I just spit it back up in my nose. A couple weeks later, this is what I got. It's a neat little pie chart with these specific percentages that were color matched to different regions on a world map. The report told me I was mostly Southwest Asian, no surprises there considering both my parents are from Iran. That percentage, 86.7, I understood that to be the portion of my DNA that's West Asian. But it turns out that's not exactly what ancestry tests are telling us at all. This is an ad for one DNA ancestry test, 23andMe. An ethnically ambiguous woman travels the world and a circle animates around her, sort of like the pie chart in my test results, as if to say, this woman's DNA is 29% East Asian. And here's an ad for a different ancestry test. 52% of my DNA comes from Scotland and Ireland. And somehow this information compels him to wear a kilt? All right, so what are ancestry tests really telling us? Can you help me understand what my results are telling me? Because I'm getting mixed messages from ads and how other people talk about their results. This is Wendy Roth. I'm an associate professor of sociology at the University of British Columbia. Okay, first of all, these test results are not about your entire DNA. They're about a tiny, tiny fraction of your DNA. To understand how genetic ancestry tests work, let's start with the DNA itself. There are about 3 billion base pairs in our genetic code. Those are the A's, C's, T's, and G's that form the instructions that make us, us. Of these 3 billion base pairs, 99.9% .9 are exactly the same in all humans. But for the remaining 0.1%, one person might have an adenine where another person has a guanine. These single letter differences are called single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs. Groups of SNPs can help explain why some people are taller than others, or why some people have green eyes while others have brown eyes. But most SNPs have no known effect at all. What many DNA tests are looking at are a relatively small number of SNPs, specific positions in this 0.1% in our DNA, in order to give you your results. When a testing company receives your sample, they compare your pattern of SNPs to different reference populations in their database. 
These reference populations contain SNPs known to exist more frequently in different modern populations in the world. Then the testing company will give you a percentage that represents how strongly your pattern of SNPs resembles that group. But this process has a bunch of important limitations, and this is where things get complicated. Lots of markers are found in multiple populations around the world. First, even trying to classify humans into groups in the first place is tricky. Human genetic diversity isn't organized neatly into groups like countries or continents. Take a look at the distribution of this SNP that affects how a person absorbs folic acid. It's commonly found in Mexico, but also in Chile or even China just as often. So let's say that a particular marker is found in the South Asian population 30% of the time. There's still a possibility that when you inherited this marker, you got it not from somebody who was South Asian, but from somebody who was in some completely different group that also happened to have that marker. Second, testing companies put together their reference populations based on academic research and other people that have taken genetic ancestry tests. And most testing companies aren't clear about how many people are represented in their reference populations. So each company might have different reference databases, which helps explain why you might get different results from different companies. So what does this all mean for my results? This is a, a, a probability with a margin of error. So it's not that you overall are 85% West Asian, but that the particular spots that they happen to look at, 85% of those locations are associated with Western Asia in their reference population. So what about these other results? Am I really 2% African? You've got a lot of, you know, sort of small trace percentages here. Percentages that small are really not meaningful. Again, because that could be affected by having one person in the database. And if that one person gets reclassified later on because they get, you know, a larger sample, that percentage will disappear. Ultimately, DNA ancestry tests are really just giving us a probability, the testing company's best guess, and that uncertainty isn't made very clear in the results. Buried in my results, I found this confidence slider. It turns out my results were presented at about 50% confidence by default. When I increased that to 90%, my results got much more vague. All of a sudden, I was broadly West Asian, and a lot of my genetic markers were unassigned. So DNA ancestry tests don't actually tell us where our ancestors lived. They're really just giving us probabilities of where we're likely to have relatives today. But so what if people misinterpret their results? Well, that has consequences. They can make us believe that our ethnicities have these bright line distinctions between them, like in a pie chart. When people are presented uh, with test results and, and these percentage breakdowns, and they are led to think that these tests can tell you your race, or they can tell you who you are, that leads to a way of thinking. It makes us feel that there are very stark and clear biological differences between races. One study found that DNA ancestry tests reinvigorate age-old beliefs in essential racial differences, that our socially constructed racial categories like white or black are essentially different from each other. Some groups have even turned to genetic ancestry tests to try and prove their racial purity. DNA ancestry tests can be useful. Search YouTube and you'll find hundreds of stories of people using them to find lost relatives and to fill in their family histories. I just found my biological dad's family. And to people who don't know a lot about their ancestry, the tests offer the best available estimate. So I really don't know that much about like my genetic history. But it's important to remember that despite their marketing, these tests are just a company's best guess at matching your genetic markers to different parts of the world. What they're not going to tell you is whether you should wear a kilt or not. DNA ancestry tests might not be as informative as you want them to be, but more and more people are still taking them. And this giant database of genetic information is becoming super valuable to an unexpected group, law enforcement. We teamed up with Verge Science to look into how your privacy is at risk because of these DNA ancestry tests, even if you've never taken one.